Greetings to all the members around Australia and around the world on the Muck Hybrid Colour Global Creative Group. My name is Guy Wright, Global Artistic Director for Muck Hair And today we're going to be going through the quick tips to understand the different areas of the head and the importance that they play when it comes to planning a haircut. During our classes that we've carried out throughout the year, so many students have asked me, how does the back sit? How does the side work? How did you cut the top? And the simple answer is I need to understand where the areas of the head start and where they finish. So today I'm going to be showing you how I find the nape, the back, the crown, the side and the top and the simple way that we can execute that. The first thing that we need to do is establish the left from the right or split the head in half. So as you can see what I've done is taken a central vertical section that runs symmetrically right down through the centre of the head. Working through from the front right the way through, right into the nape. We now need to separate the front from the back. We've already separated the left from the right, I'll split the head in two. And the best way to separate the front from the back or know exactly where the front and the back will fall is to make sure you have the head in the natural position and placing your comb on top of the head and so it's completely symmetrically balanced. You'll see where the high point of the head is. You can see right here on my head, it's right through here using the wide tooth of the comb we're just going to come straight down through the head and we're going to finish in the center of the ear so a little bit further forward from that point the center of the ear is where we want to end up and that will split the head in four so all of this hair that falls through in this section is obviously going to be in the front and all of this hair is going to fall down into the back so now we've sectioned the head into four See the front from the back and the left from the right. The next section we need to establish is our nape section. And the best way to find the nape is by utilizing the occipital bone. And the best way that I like to find the occipital bone is using a straight surface of the comb, obviously on the round of the head, and just placing that comb in at the nape. And where that comb leaves the scalp, which is right here, that's where the occipital bone is. Now that's going to change from person to person. So utilizing the wide tooth of our comb and just coming in a straight horizontal section to the center of the ear is going to section off the nape area nice and clean. As you can see, there is the nape. Next we're going to section off from the crown to the back. And the best way to do that is again placing the comb on the back of the head just so it sits flat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pivot that comb at 45 degrees. And when that comb's pivoted, where that comb leaves the scalp, I'm gonna come around in a round section to connect through to my section that runs from the top, from the high point of the head through to the top of the ear. And we'll section out the crown first, and then we will section out the back. So we get a distinct difference between the three areas at the back of the head. As you can see, we have the nape, we have this section which is that we consider the back, and then all of this hair through here is considered the crown. Okay, so now you can see we have the whole back of the head really sectioned off. All this hair from here up is the crown, this is the back, and this is the nape. Now we're going to section off the top from the side. So taking out our side section, and all we're going to do here is just continue again, once again, using the wide tooth of our comb, just continuing that line through into the recession area. This section here is our side section. Okay. Now, if you noticed as well, this section continued all the way through to the recession area also creates a horseshoe section. If we continued that all the way around, that would actually be the perfect horseshoe section to enable the crown to fall over the top. So these are real fundamental sections when it comes to understanding where you're going to be cutting your shape. For instance, if you were going to be doing an undercut, the best way to, to find out your undercut section would be to run a section from the recession area 
on a diagonal line directly through into the occipital bone. And that will make sure that the hair that you cut underneath is all underneath the curvature of the head. So you get that spill that comes over the top. So as you can see, we've got the five sections on one side. Obviously, if we were doing the other side, you would have five on that side. So there's 10 sections to the head. So when someone says to me, how do you cut the back of that haircut? Well, in the nape, I cut it at 45 degrees or 90 degrees, depending on which haircut I'm doing. Through the back, I work more with a round layer. And then through the crown, I overextended through the top. Whatever your haircut, whatever the technique may be, understanding these 10 subsections are so important when it comes to understanding cutting hair. If we were gonna do something with a forward graduation in the front, we would be only taking hair from this section and this section as opposed to dragging this hair or combing this hair right through to the front. Because this hair is obviously gonna fall down in through the back. This is one of the most important things that I've ever learned when it comes to cutting hair. Understanding these 10 sections are probably the single most important thing that I've learned to be able to be, you know, I consider to myself to be quite a reasonable haircut. And, and most of it is understanding these sections.